Hey everybody, uh, we are looking at section 9.5 in our book now. We are going to be looking at congruence transformations. So we've been doing a lot of transformations, uh, especially rigid transformations, also known as isometries. Okay, uh, now we're going to be looking at figures and basically looking at how we prove figures are congruent uh, by using transformations. Okay, that's what a congruence transformation is. Okay, let's get into it. Basically, what we're doing in this section is all about proving figures are congruent. It's based on this following premise here, right? That two figures are congruent if and only if there is a sequence of one or more rigid motions that maps one figure onto the other. So if we can make some rigid transformations that move, rotate, translate, reflect one figure so that it pops onto another one, we know the two figures must be congruent, okay? So we're going to be using compositions of rigid motions to determine congruence, to understand it, and to prove congruence of certain figures, all right? So let's look at how this works. Just to give you an example to start off with, we've got a composition where we're going to do the reflection about line N on the rotation, 90 degrees around P, on figure LMNO, and get GHJK. Okay, so once again, looking at how we do our uh, uh, rules, or our nomenclature, our designations here. First, we're going to look at this rotation, 90 degrees about point P, so every figure or every point on LMNO reflects over onto the orange figure, okay? And there's our first step, the rotation 90 degrees around point P. Uh, okay, after that, we're going to do the reflection step. We're going to do a reflection over line N, all right? So that every point from the orange figure translates over to uh, uh, figure JHJK. So once again, we're doing a, uh, a composition of transformations, one rotation, one reflection, and we're gonna get two congruent figures. Okay, so now because we know that compositions of isometries preserve angle measures, we know that the angle measures of the corresponding figures in their corresponding orders must be congruent, okay? O must be congruent to K, L to G, etc. You can read along with it right there, okay? We know those figures must be congruent because both of those steps, the, the uh, rotation and the reflection, have to preserve angle measures. Also, because compositions of isometries preserve distance, we know that the sides among co uh, corresponding uh, uh, sides, corresponding points, must also remain congruent, okay? So therefore, LM is congruent to GH, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So again, we're looking at the corresponding points and angles and recognizing that the sides and angles must be the same between the figures after the, the, the composition of isometries, okay? Good. Okay, so which figures are congruent? Well, it's fairly obvious just by looking at them, but the next question is, what is the sequence of rigid motions that maps one figure onto the other? Okay, so I'm gonna look at, say, the line right here, okay, the segment AB, and if I just duplicate that, and if I just do a translation down to here, I know that I've mapped one figure onto the other. Therefore, we can write the rule that the translation over 6, down 16 on segment AB becomes QR. Okay, we know that these line segments are congruent. Next, I can look at the uh, triangle here. Okay, and once again, if I do a rotation, and I can't do this all at once, but again, if I do a rotation around 180 degrees around the origin, I end up landing it at uh, 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 G, uh, JKP, okay? So therefore, because I could do a, a transformation, uh, in this case a rotation, 180 degrees around the origin, on, the two, on one triangle to get to the other, I know that those two figures must be congruent. Finally, the, the uh, quadrilaterals here, okay? 
little more complicated, but look at what I'm going to do. Let me make that blue just so we can see it easier. Okay, if I take uh, DEFG and then translate it, uh, looks like that's left about, oh, I don't know, uh, six, about nine units left. And then I do a reflection across, let's say, the line about, let's see, uh, flipping x-axis. Then I do a rotation, uh, a reflection about the line, uh, I believe, the line was uh, y equals 1, okay? That meant that I was two units up and two units down. Then I end up right at the spot where LMNO is, okay? So basically what we know then is that we did this composition, the translation of left 9, up and down 0, and then a reflection over the line y equals 1 on DEGF, and it became NOML, then the quadrilaterals must be congruent. So we've proved those figures congruent by using a series or a single uh, uh, isometry or a series of isometries, a composition, to, move, to, to prove that the two figures would be congruent in each case. Okay, what transformation would map ABC onto PQR? Okay, now this is a little bit harder, but... We're going to do the same kind of thing. I'm going to uh, select that and duplicate it. Let me make it blue so we can see it. Okay. Now, there's our figure. What do you think we're going to do to move it over? You can pause if you want. Here comes the answer. Uh, any one of these answers, in fact, may work. Okay. Uh, I could do a translation uh, over, uh, sorry, move it down 11. So that it lines up right there, and then do a reflection align along the line of x equals negative 1, which is this one right here. Mark that, right? Reflection over this line. So translate, reflect. Or I could do it in any number of orders. I could reflect across the y-axis first. Set this back where it was. Undo that. Choose that. Okay. I could also have done it a different way. Okay, for example, do my uh, translation to 11, right, uh, okay, first, okay, so I could do a translation over 2, down 11, land right there, and then do a reflection across the y-axis, okay. Either of those do the translation, then the reflection. Notice that we could also do the reflection first, followed by the translation. Any of those answers would have worked. But some combination of a reflection and a translation gets me from RPQ to uh, CAB. All right. How would we prove now the theorems from Chapter 4? So, for example, could we use this idea to prove the SSS postulate? So, if we're given that these three sides... EF is congruent to LM, right? And FG to MN and EFG to LMN. Could we use these ideas to prove that these two figures are congruent? Well, sure, sure we can. In fact, I think I'm going to do it on the next page. Nope, I'm not. Uh, let's see how we're going to do this. So, I'm going to take this figure and... Basically, I'm going to slide it over. Okay, so I'm going to do a translation first. Then I'm going to do a rotation so that these sides line up. Then I'm going to do a reflection. Uh, wrong. Then I'm going to do a reflection. And move it over there, and we have definitely proven that if three sides of a triangle are congruent, we can map one figure onto the other, therefore the two triangles must be congruent. And that's where we're going. Have a good day. I'll see you guys later.